All right, so we're going to start looking at methods for solving basic differential equations. Um, like I mentioned um, in the introductory section, we are not developing sophisticated methods here. You, you can take a course in differential equations where you will see a lot of other methods that might come up. Um, but we're going to start small with sort of two of the simplest cases that, uh, that have sort of standard techniques for solving. Um, other types of differential equation and other methods are going to be left for some other course on differential equations. It's not going to be part of your uh, calculus course. Um, so what does a separable equation look like? So a separable equation is going to be one typically that looks like dy dx is equal to a product, a function of x and a function of y, right? So for example, you might have something like dy dx is equal to, let's say, xy squared. Um, or even, here's one of the equations we looked at last time, dy dx is equal to, let's say, k times y. Um, I can think of that as a product, uh, you know, function of x times a function of y, if I think of this as a constant function of x, right? Um, and so what you're going to do, typically with a differential equation like this, is you rearrange and you kind of get things on other, either side. And you take this dy dx and you treat it like a fraction, right? And now this is sort of odd when we, when we first start talking about derivatives and we introduce this Leibniz notation for derivatives. You know, Usually, somebody is always very careful to emphasize that this is not a fraction, this notation for a derivative, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but once you get into talking about differentials, you realize that, you know what, you kind of can get away with manipulating it like a fraction, right? We can think of dy and dx as, as little differential elements, right? Sort of infinitesimals. And, and you can sort of get away with this sometimes, right? Even think like chain rule, right? Chain rule you can think of sometimes in terms of canceling fractions, and it makes sense. Right? Whether it's rigorous or not, well, if, if it helps us remember the chain rule and it gets us to the answer, then maybe it's not so bad even if it isn't super rigorous. Um, so if you treat this like a fraction, then you can rearrange, right? So you rearrange things. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by 1 over g of y or divide by g of y. And we're going to multiply by dx. So we can rearrange like this. 1 over g of y times dy will be equal to f of x times dx, right? Um, so we essentially rewrite the equation as, as an equality of differentials, OK? So here is, a, here is a differential with respect to y, right? Here's a differential with respect to x. So on this side, we, you know, this would be obtained by taking the derivative with respect to y of some function, a differential with respect to y. On this side, differential with respect to x. OK? Well, once you've, once you've rearranged, then you can integrate. OK? So right, the way you undo a, a differential is, is by integrating, by finding an antiderivative. Uh, and, and then you solve. You solve both sides independently. So you do this as an integral here. You treat the integration variable as y. On this side, integration variable is x. And then you try to reconcile things at the end. Um, this is kind of standard operating procedure for a separable equation. So if you're doing something like this one here, well, then you want to say that y to the minus 2 times dy is equal to x times dx, right? And integrate both sides, so we get minus 1 over y is equal to 1 half x squared, let's see, plus a constant, right? And probably you want to solve for y, so you take the reciprocal of both sides, get rid of that minus sign, and you get something like y is equal to minus 1 over half x squared plus a constant, right? Same story here. Uh, we, we looked at this one. Before, we saw that we know the answer should be, should be an exponential function, possibly up to a constant. 
So let's try to understand why that is. Well, if I rearrange, kind of same as before, 1 over y times dy is equal to simply k times dx. And I integrate, well, on this side I get natural log of y, maybe you want to put the absolute value in, kx plus c. Um, typically we, you know, the, the absolute value is something that you sometimes dispense with when you're doing differential equations. Um, and you decide on, on whether you should, you know, use plus or minus y based on things like initial conditions, right? Are you given an initial value for y that is positive or negative? Um, so if you exponentiate both sides, you would get something that looks like y is equal to e to the kx plus c, something like that, right? Um, and, and maybe you rewrite this as something like y naught e to the kx, where y naught is simply e to the c, right? It's the value of y when, when x is equal to 0. Um, so that's pretty much the strategy for every separable equation. We'll look at a number of examples as we work our way through. Um, they're all going to follow more or less the same theme. And typically what you're looking for, if you're trying to decide on whether or not an equation is separable, whether this approach is going to work, you're looking for this kind of product pattern, function of x multiplied by a function of y. Um, generally, if you see addition or subtraction, probably the equation is not separable. Um, unless, you know, there's some factoring or something you can do, right? So maybe we have something like dy dx is um, something like x squared plus x squared times y, and you think, well, maybe that's not actually separable, but then you realize that you can, you can factor out the x squared and you can get it into that form. Um, so occasionally you want to be on the lookout for that sort of thing, um, but Typically, you're looking for this product pattern, and then you follow this general strategy.